Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and let's take three fat quarters or three long strips of fabric and turn it into a long huggable oven mitt. For this project I will be using three fat quarters but you could use three long strips of fabric instead. You'll be able to use the width of the fabric at 45 inches and you're going to need anywhere between 10 to 12 inches wide. You're also going to need some cotton batting. Two fabrics will make the oven mitt and one will be the binding. And this fun orange fabric is from Timeless Treasures. Take your two fat quarters and cut them in half down the long side. And we're going to sew those two together so we're having one long strip. It won't matter the size of the fabric, we just need two long strips. I now have two long strips of fabric with the seams down the center. I have 10 inches by about 43 inches. We're going to turn these two strips into a quilt layer. So we're going to need that back fabric down, some batting, and our top piece. For the batting it's important that we do not have a polyester batting. We do need more cotton than polyester. And in this case, I'm using an 80-20, which means 80% is cotton, 20% is polyester. Because this is going to be an oven mitt, we do need it to withstand some heat. I'm going to need two layers, even three layers of quilt batting. We're going to sandwich those together. I would recommend before quilting to give a good press and steam to flatten all of these layers. It's going to be easier to go under the machine, but it also is going to test the batting to make sure it can withstand some heat. You can have that bottom layer larger than the top layer because we're going to trim this all down after it's quilted. To quilt these together, I'm just going to do some straight stitching on a grid line. And I'm going to mark my darker side and I'm going to use a piece of hand soap. This is just a regular soap that I have smoothed out and pointed the edges and it shows up really good on dark fabric and we know it washes out because it's soap. I have a two and a half inch space between all of my grid lines. I'm going to bring this to the machine, put on my walking foot and just do a straight row of stitching on all these lines to quilt all these layers together. When all of my lines have been stitched, that soap can just come off with a damp cloth. Or you can leave it and it will wash out the first time you wash it. Once the quilting has been done, we can square it up. The size is not important. We just need both ends the same size and the edges the same size. So we're making one long rectangle. When it's trimmed down, I would recommend doing a zigzag all the way around. That way it's going to condense that batting to be a little bit thinner so it'll be easier to handle and it also will anchor these long stitches that we did to do the quilting. And that zigzag needs to be a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. With that stabilizing and squishing stitch, we're going to be able to put binding on the two ends. And that's where that last piece of fabric is going to come in. We will need two strips of binding that's just a little bit bigger than that end. Take your fabric, fold it in half and press and stitch that on coming on and off a quarter inch and do nothing to the edges, just stitch on and stitch off. All the raw edges matched up so that fold is going to be able to be folded over. And from the other side, we can do a top stitch and stitch that binding down. With those two short ends done, we're going to be able to take those sides and turn them over to the front. And our hands are going to fit into these pockets. So the pockets need to be anywhere between seven and a half to eight inches. Whatever your hands are comfortable with and for how much length you want. I'm going to choose seven and a half inches and fold both of these down and then do one more row of stitching along the edges just to hold this together so it doesn't shift. 
with those pockets stitched down, we can now trim off this little extra. Binding needs to go on each side, and the binding needs to be at least two inches bigger on both sides. We can sew the binding on the one side or sew it on the back side. It's just going to be a personal preference on where you want to sew it. And we're going to do a special treatment on these corners. I'm going to sew my binding on the back side and have it go over to the front. And you don't need to measure the two inches on each side. It just needs to be an approximate. The binding has been stitched on and we have this little tail. Take the fold and bring it over towards the seam. Pull that so it's firm right along that edge. And from the side where you can see the stitching, just stitch right along that same stitching line. So that fold is coming in. We have that stitching line and the binding is wrapping around the edge. Now we can cut off this little point and trim a little bit of the binding right to this edge. So here's the side that we've pulled over and we've trimmed that off and that binding goes all the way around to the other side. And do this to all four corners. Once it's been pulled over, stitched and trimmed, we can pull all of that binding out. We're going to be able to take that long side and just roll it over to the front. Hold this little point down and roll it over. We're going to be able to top stitch this binding down all the way because all four sides are going to be finished with this corner. You can hand stitch it or machine stitch it down. With the binding coming over and tucked inside, we have a nice finished edge. I would recommend cutting your binding at two and a half inches to start with. You have a lot of fabric to go through and a lot of batting. So that extra width will be taken up in all of this edge. Once that's stitched down, we're done. We have an area where we can put our hands and grab whatever we need out of the oven. If you had one long piece, you would not have a seam in the center on both sides. And if you'd like, you can make them even longer. It all depends on the comfort level on what you like to use your gloves with. The pocket size is up to you and the length is up to you. We're basically just quilting two long pieces of fabric together, wrapping over and making pockets. And this will hang nicely on the oven door. These are so much fun to make and they look nice from both sides. And there's so many different fabrics that we could make these in. We could make them for every different season, holidays, and every decor we could possibly think of. Oh, the possibilities. And the sizing is really all up to you. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.